All right, hello, my name is Cameron Kirk and welcome to this uh, introduction to a new series I am making on the uh, DE10 Nano FPGA um, system on chip. So let's see here. Let's talk about what this is. Um, this video is just gonna be sort of like an introduction to the hardware and um, give you a sense of like what this is all about and uh, where this series is gonna be going. Um, so let's start off with what is an FPGA. I'm gonna see if I can make this text a little bit bigger. So FPGA stands for Field Programmable Gate Array, but uh, basically what this thing is, is, is it is a, um, a chip that allows you to implement any kind of hardware you want onto there. And there's a programming language that goes with that, but basically what it is is a, um, you know, a field of, uh, or sorry, like um, an array of gates, so like logic gates, and you can uh, write code that uh, implements any sort of logical circuit that you want. Um, it can do sequential circuits or uh, combinational circuits um, and so on, blah, 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 blah. But basically this is a chip that lets you design chips and you can um, basically design your chip and actually program it onto the FPGA and test it and see if you like it. And then ultimately the next thing you would do is take that design and actually get it turned into a application specific integrated circuit or ASIC. Um, so application, Wow, application specific integration, integrated circuit. Yeah, so um, there are all sorts of chips that, um, you know, sort of look like this. Um, but uh, the idea is that once you take your design and turn it into an application specific integrated circuit, its function is now cemented into the chip. So you can't make an ASIC like this and have a manufacturer make you, you know, a thousand of them for economies of scale and then decide, oh, you know what, I actually want this pen to do something else. I want to change the circuitry inside to change this pen. You can't do that. Once this thing is manufactured, it is set in stone. Whereas with a FPGA, you can totally just wipe the whole chip and uh, put something new on. Um, right. So that's sort of an idea of what an FPGA is. Um, one thing you may have heard of is these Bitcoin ASIC miner. Um, this is, uh, oh man, these look pretty crazy. But basically this is an application specific integrated circuit. There's loads of these. I don't recommend you buy these. I, I don't personally do this, but I know that this is um, one thing that people have done is that they've created ASIC miners. <clears throat> and so, um, you know, I, I'm not guaranteeing I will get into how to make an ASIC miner, uh, but you will definitely be learning the skill set needed to build one of these. And I feel like I could uh, potentially design my own ASIC miner, but that would be a huge challenge. But basically, you would need to understand the, uh, the process or the algorithm or the computation that is happening when you're, uh, you know, um, running some sort of algorithm on a CPU. Um, but the thing about a CPU, and let's see if I can just Google search something that's gonna give a helpful image. The thing about a CPU is it has sort of a pipeline. And uh, these things are designed in a way that uh, are going to be able to do any sort of general purpose computing. Um, and it does it, um, you know, it, it, it does it at such a fast rate that it seems instant, but really this is sort of a sequential process. So you're going to load the instruction, you're going to decode the instruction, you're going to, um, you know, if it wants some operands, you're going to load up the operands. And then the ALU, the arithmetic logic unit, this is something that we are going to get into in this tutorial series is how, to, how these things work and how you can actually design an ALU. Um, and also all the CPU process, you know, the CPU pipeline in general, this is something that I'd like to dis discuss in this tutorial series, but, um, you know, CPUs are designed so that they can, they can do just about anything. Um, you know, there, there's, uh, you know, a risk versus CISC instruction set, uh, reduced instruction set versus complete instruction set. But basically, uh, the idea is that 
these uh, CPUs are designed to do anything. And they want it, they do it pretty good, they do it pretty fast, but um, if you take some sort of computation and you say, okay, you know what, I don't wanna go through this whole song and dance of what a CPU has to do to be able to do anything and do what I want. I want the hardware to do what I want. I want it to do exactly what I want. Um, that's the sort of uh, hardware you're gonna be uh, creating with an FPGA. It's very, very um, specific to what you wanna get done and you get performance benefits at the cost of that general purpose computing. So um, you're no longer gonna have a, uh, um, a piece of hardware that can do anything and do what you want. It's going to do what you want and nothing else. Um, and that's sort of what you're gonna be designing on an FPGA. Um, really quickly, let me just see what comes up if I search for combinational uh, circuit. I think I spelled that wrong. Images. What do we get on Google? Well, yeah, I mean, these are very, 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 very simple combinational circuits. Um, so we have some logic gates here. We're going to be getting into these later in the tutorial. Um, and you have some inputs and these wires, you can literally think of them as physical wires. So um, the this wire here connecting A to this gate and B connecting to this gate, these are going to hold a value and that is going to be either zero or one or um, zero volts or five volts. It is it is literally um, in hard, hardware making this these connections and doing this logic in hardware. So we're not uh, we're not you know doing this in the CPU in software. This is going to be in hardware in real time combinational. All right, so let's let's get back get back on track here. Um, one of the things that are interesting about FPGAs is there's this thing called soft IP core. And what this is, is basically IP, I think stands for intellectual property. Um, but basically the idea is that um, you are going to take a, uh, uh, a bunch of design files that describe a CPU and you're gonna load it up on your FPGA and you're gonna modify it and you're gonna add custom instructions, custom hardware. Um, you're going to basically make your own custom CPU that is going to maybe have some acceleration on what you, what it is you want to get computed. Right, so um, what else? Uh, another interesting thing about this board in particular and why I think you might be interested in buying it and doing this tutorial series is if it turns out you're just not gonna stick with the tutorial series, you don't think it's that interesting, um, you know, maybe har designing hardware isn't your interest. Uh, this board still isn't gonna be wasted. It's not gonna be collecting dust on your shelf, um, like with your Raspberry Pi or whatever. This board actually has a whole community behind it um, where they actually take, let's see here, I'm gonna copy this link. There's a whole community based around, uh, so this is the board, this is the DE10. It is DE10 Nano. It is nested in there sandwiched between these two I.O. boards. But basically, uh, people like to, uh, let's see, what does it say here? They, they like to uh, not emulate, but actually re-implement um, re classic uh, computer systems, 16-bit computers, or uh, even uh, retro video game systems. Um, so the Nintendo Game Boy, NES. Now, this is different than, uh, this is very different than emulation. Emulation, you are basically having your CPU and it is doing all the work to make it seem like there is an entire system running on your computer, but it's all done in software. This is going to be basically done in hardware. And the other nice thing about it, since it's on an FPGA, if you're done playing your Nintendo NES, you can just wipe the FPGA and implement a Nintendo Game Boy. Um, and loads of arcade games. So ultimately, you know, after you're done working on this tutorial series, uh, you can just repurpose your DE10 Nano uh, for some excellent uh, retro video game all-in-one systems that uh, you can play with. Um, so this isn't something that I will necessarily be getting into in this tutorial series, but just know that, um, you know, it's not gonna be wasted hardware if you like these sort of retro video games, uh, the Genesis, uh, 
it it can it's capable of running that all right so the main thing that you're going to be learning in this tutorial series is uh, you're going to be learning how to uh, program an FPGA and the way this is done is by using a programming language called Verilog. This is one of the uh, languages you can use. Um, but basically this is a hardware description language and what you're going to be doing is you're going to be writing uh, code that is describing a piece of hardware. So its inputs, its outputs, its functions, how it's going to get it done, um, things like that. Um, and you can actually do a lot with Verilog. It is actually a very powerful language. Uh, and it sort of reminds you of programming in C. If you have any experience with the C syntax, it is going to loosely follow the C syntax, but I wouldn't say if you know C, it's going to transfer. Yeah, it totally doesn't transfer. There are some things that are reminiscent of C, but um, you really can't think of this as uh, you know programming in C. But yeah, so this tutorial will mainly be cov covering Verilog, just so you're aware. All right. So the other thing I wanted to talk about is what is special, like what makes this particular board special and. Um, it is this right here, SOC, or System on Chip. Now, they kind of gloss over this, but this is actually um, one of the things that I think is really cool. You could do a lot of cool projects with this board. So basically, there is this chip, and this has our Cyclone 5 FPGA on it. But not only that, but it is it also has a dual core ARM CPU inside this chip um, and the FPGA and the dual core ARM CPU are connected together in a very, very high speed bus. So basically you could be making your FPGA do something very cool and then you can send it over to Linux running on ARM um, and you can sort of see how the applications you can the sort of applications you can have with this is very powerful. So this would be the equivalent of getting an FPGA um, and then connecting it using some sort of, you know, serial communication or um, maybe a parallel communication with a Raspberry Pi. Uh, and you have two boards that are kind of trying to talk to each other. And there's going to be a huge bottleneck with however you decide to wire them up or connect them. Or maybe it's over the internet, uh, maybe it's over the cloud, however you decide to connect your FPGA to your, um, you know, your traditional CPU um where you can do general purpose things maybe this thing does something very quickly and your cpu does some you know it processes that information and sends it to the cloud or whatever you like it has it all on the same chip and i think this is something that i've never worked with before but i think that there is a lot of potential with this so you can think of this board as a raspberry pi with a built-in fpga there is a load of capabilities that you can have on this board and if you're any familiar at all with the arduino you'll notice you have these uh headers here which are exactly the arduino headers so again like uh you have you have the arduino headers and you can if you have an arduino shield something that just slaps on top that it, it lines up perfectly so it's compatible with arduino and then you're not limited to just the io of an arduino board and our arduino microcontroller um you have all of these gpio headers so you have just loads and loads of expansion uh capabilities on this board so uh this board really it, it's it's an impressive impressive amount of uh um you know hardware and and possibilities that you can load onto this as we've seen with you know in, uh, implementing game systems not emulation that's the real deal so um yeah lo loads of uh possibilities for this board um super recommended uh, and and you will need to pick this up uh to follow this tutorial series you need to purchase one of these so uh, next, I want to talk about where to buy this board. So I'll have this link in the description, and um, this is where you buy the board. You click this buy button, and it is a little bit of a steep price. It is $170. I think that might be a result of the time I am filming this. I believe I picked mine up for much, much, much cheaper. I think I picked mine up for $105 with an academic discount. Um, but right now, the standard price is $170. And I don't see a way to get the academic discount, but I believe there still is an academic discount. Um, so uh, they might make this a little bit difficult for you, but it might be worth asking if you can get this board for cheaper. I super recommend it, but 
Um, if you're okay with that $170 price tag, then um, be my guest. There is a chip shortage at the time I'm filming this, so I think that that might be part of the reason why. Also, the night I decided to film this, I noticed that um, the homepage website you go to for this board has changed. Um, and I can just show you, because my website, my browser still has the website cached. This is previously where I was going, which is the terrasec.com. Um, and I have here the resources page and I was going to show you where to go and get all these, you know, great resources, which are very helpful, um, which you will need to download. Um, but you'll notice if I click the home page, um, uh, this terrasec website um, seems to be down. Yeah. So that's uh, interesting. So they couldn't have made it more difficult to you know, get this board and get all the things you need downloaded, but I'm going to show you where to go and what to get. Okay, anyways, so that is where you buy it. The link is in the description again. Actually, I'm going to save this link for later. Cool. So the next thing I'd like to show is uh, what you get once you have the board. Now, this isn't technically an unboxing, but I'm going to change the camera over here. Hello. Um, I, I've already had this board for, uh, I think, a few months now, but uh, let's just go ahead and take a look at what we get inside. This is the board, the box that it comes in. Um, let's see here. I will go ahead and open this lid up, and you get some uh, instructional manuals here um, printed on some glossy paper. Uh, this I stirred it for a little while. This looked kind of interesting. It's talking about some sort of, uh, uh, some sort of DAC, right? Yeah, um, digital, wait, analog to digital converter or digital to analog converter. So this is like uh, taking analog signals and then putting them digital and then taking them back. It has like a 24-bit, right? 24-bit? I don't know, a 20-bit, 20-bit uh, analog to digital converter, which is some very, very nice precision. I think the Arduino only gets you 12 bits um, of precision on your analog signals but that's a daughter board that you have to pay extra money for i did not buy that board just thought it was interesting some uh plastic and then it's got this nice foam case take this off and here is what in, is inside we have a power cable that it requires nine volt power cable um it gives you two usbs that come with it um this is for connecting to your computer and uh, it also comes with an SD card, a uh, micro SD card, and it actually came preloaded with uh, the image on it, the Angstrom image, uh, which is like a flavor of Linux uh, that is special for this board and blah, 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 blah. And it also comes loaded with a um, setup to run a web server so that when you uh, first get your board, you can have this nice out of box experience um where you can plug in the usb cable and it opens uh you know a web server and you can kind of click around on the board i don't recommend doing that it's kind of a waste of time i mean it was cool maybe you know five years ago ten years ago but um there's not really a whole lot you can get out of looking at that and then here is the board itself um there is this this is the the stock cover plate that it comes with um i have it taken off because i had gotten this uh add-on for the board that gives it a heat sink and a fan so mine has this uh heat sink on it now i haven't had this heat sink for very long and this fan for very long but what I noticed was uh, they sort of made the cover plate here cover the switches. There's some switches you can get to, and the previous cover did not. It, it had a little cutout so I can get to the switches. So I think for the most part of my tutorial, I'm not going to have this fan. And this fan was, I think, like $10 plus $5 shipping. Um, if you're going, uh, I don't... I don't necessarily recommend getting the fan. I'd say hold off on the fan until maybe later and make a video where I recommend getting it. The reason why I got this fan is once you get this SD card in there and you turn it on for the first time, and you if you do decide to try out the um, you know pre-built image that has the web server running and you want to fire that up, this board actually gets very, very hot. 
Um, and it kind of bothered me. Like this thing got this this thing heated up very quickly, and it was making me a little bit uncomfortable. Um, but once I got this fan, it totally fixed the problem. It also had, I also got a heat sink that kind of just sticks on to the core, the system on chip. And uh, yeah, but I think for our when you're just working with the FPGA and you're using the USB blaster and you're just trying to program the FPGA with Verilog code, it does not heat up very much. Um, I think maybe later when you start having more complicated designs loaded onto the board, it, it may have a heating issue, but uh, I think for the most part, you'll be okay not to get this fan. Um, it, how, however, if you do want to just get the fan ordered, uh, be my guest. But uh, if it's for the purposes of implementing, you know, retro computers or game systems, then I would probably find a guide and uh, purchase the uh, the I/O that it recommends, um, not just the fan by itself, because they make like you know add-ons that kind of click on that have like the VGA slot. And, I mean, you saw that picture, so um, just be aware of that. Um, so yeah, in the next video, you're not going to see this fan; you're going to see the the stock uh, plate on the board. So for this next part, I just, and for the last part here, I just wanna go over some of the things that you will need to download and have installed before the next video. Let me take a quick drink of coffee here. And the first thing that we need to get, and the link is gonna be in the description, is you're gonna to need to get a copy of Quartus. So um, the link in the description should take you here. I'm gonna refresh the page, just make sure I'm at the right place. Yep. So we want Cordis Prime. Uh, we do not want standard edition. What we want is the free light edition. And so far, um, I have not ran into any limitations for having the light. Um, light is free. Uh, standard and pro cost money. And the other important thing is you have to, have to, have to get version 17. It has to be version 17. Uh, this is the version supported for the DE10 Nano. And uh, you'll select Windows. Uh, sorry, Mac users, it doesn't look like there's an option for you unless if you have a uh, boot camp or a way to run Windows applications on your MacBook or whatever you might have. Um, maybe you can try installing the Linux version on Mac. I don't know that that works. I'm not going to really get into that. But anyways, we'll get the Windows. We'll scroll down here. And what you need to download, and these downloads take a long time. And I'll go ahead and like just start it up. Um, we'll click agree. I already have this installed on my machine, so I'm not going to go over how to actually do the installers, but it is just like any other installer wizard. You just click next, okay, accept, next, 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 okay, yes, yes, okay, yes, next. Whatever it asks for, you just give it to it, and it'll install. Um, so yeah, I guess the download's going kind of quick. I'm going to pause that because I already have this downloaded. Um, so you will need to get this Cordis Prime with the, uh, I, I want to pronounce it noise, but it's like Neos 2. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm pretty sure I was told it, it's pronounced noise too. Um, but that is a soft IP core. Um, and then we need model sim. I don't, I'll show you how to use model sim in this tutorial. I'm pretty sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, we'll get model sim. We'll get model sim. So go ahead and download that and install it. And I will make sure to make some videos that um, show how this thing works. And the other thing you're going to need is when you scroll down on devices, you need the Cyclone 5 device support. Go ahead and get that downloaded. All right. Um, next up, I would recommend heading over to this GitHub repository and the link is in the description, the DE10 web content, DE10 nano web content. Now, what this is, is this is basically this exact same experience that you will get um, by running the web server on the out of box experience that I was talking about earlier. It has that little micro SD card and you plug it into the DE10 board and then you power it up and you plug it in the USB cable and then you, uh, you know, it connects it like it's a thumb drive and you click start and then it says, okay, connect to 192.168.2.7 or whatever it might be. And then it loads up a web server that's running on the DE10 Nano. Um, this 
All this web content is basically exactly what you're gonna see by doing that. And it's nice that they put it in a repository because that means now you can download all the things that are in that um, web server without actually having to spin up and, and run that web server. Because um, uh, that some of the content that I wanted, I ended up having to download from, uh, oh my gosh, look at that. The TerraSick website did load. Okay, I wonder why it took so long to load. Okay, I guess the Terrasic website does still work. Um, so, okay, so I think this is, okay, so I'm going to put this link in the description as well. That is so strange. At the time I'm filling this, it, it was timing out for me. But um, I will put this in the link as well. DE10 standard? I didn't even know that was a thing. It says it's new. Wow, we! I might want to. Oh, it's kind of steep. I'll, I'll have to save up for this. Um, well, I have the DE10 Nano, and as you can see, they have that wonderful academic discount. Now, I believe when I purchased this, this was in 2020, early 2020. It was for $105. I'm pretty sure. So I'm pretty sure that the price is up right now. But don't let that, um, you know, be talk you out of the reason for getting this board. So I will put this link in the description as well. And uh, good to know the resources page is still here. I thought they stopped hosting the website. I actually prefer coming to this website. Um, so anyways, let me get back on track. We will come back to this um, in a moment. Let's just put this back down here. Sorry for that brief interruption. Let's put this here. We'll come back to it. All right, so this web content, uh, what you'll do is, if you don't know how GitHub works, you'll click on uh, code, and then you'll copy this HTTPS link, just like I am doing right now. And then I actually just kind of got used to using the little GitHub desktop version. Um, it, I feel like it is a little bit slower than using the command line, but uh, it's, it's also just kind of nice to, I don't know, I just, went with it. Anyways, uh, you'll, you'll, if you're using this, you'll clone that repository. So I click file clone repository. Um, you can download, just search GitHub desktop and you can get this Windows 10 application here. Uh, there's multiple ways to clone a repository. You will just paste in that URL right here. And uh, since I already have it cloned, it um, is saying that it's already here. Um, so you'll click clone and it will clone that repository. It'll basically download all these uh, HTML codes to your computer in a local folder of your choice. And um, let me see here. We are looking for DE10 nano web content. So I'm going to do show in file explorer and it will open up file explorer. And then what you can do from here is if you click on this index after you clone the repository, locally on your computer, you will now have basically what was running on that web server. Now, the only thing that this won't let you look at is the learn page, as, as there's no learn page. But uh, if you run the web server and you go to the learn page, Actually, I don't know what's on the learn page. So on the play page, this isn't gonna work. This was a fast Fourier transform um, demonstration. And uh, it's talking about how like, you know, the and it makes this nice little table and it's interactive. You click on these and it, it works. Um, this isn't gonna work doing it this way. But anyways, one thing it does give you is access to uh, the board schematics, which this is very important, the schematic. And uh, you don't, and th this whole PDF is actually very important, as we'll see in later tutorials. But you don't have to actually uh, go to the index to get to that. Um, let's see, it's going to be in assets, and you got all these PDFs here. Um, one of which is the nano schematic, um, and this schematic is important uh, because it's going to basically show you the pinout of the board. So like if you want to get connected to the Arduino header, um, this is going to show you how the Arduino header is connected. We'll see this in a later tutorial, but this, this one's important. So anyways, I do recommend, uh, you know, cloning that repo if you want to skip the uh, out of box uh, web server type of thing. All right, let's get out of this, close that. 
Um, so yeah, you, you can get you can basically look at this web server without actually spinning it up. Great, close that. The other thing I recommend checking out is, and actually this is going to be what we're going to be using in the next tutorial. So uh, you can download the zip or you can clone the repository. I recommend cloning the repository. Um, so you will, uh, oh, and link is in the description for this one. This is the Terrasec DE10 Nano Kit. And this is actually going to show you how you can get started with the um, various things that this board can do for development. And this is actually the nicest uh, um, instructions I've found because there are instructions on the Terrasic website. They have uh, you know guides in here. They're kind of outdated. Um, this one is up to date and it's the latest version and it's on you know uh, Cordis version 17 um, and so on. So yeah, I do recommend cloning this repository and the repository is a little bit um, weird. It seems like they started working on this and then they kind of just gave up on it or something. I don't really know. You go to the tutorials and then it says, um, you know, you need to go here to download the PDFs and you do need to download this PDFs. So by going here, um, this is uh, where all the, the PDF tutorials are. You'll need to get my first FPGA. You'll see this in the next one. What I do is I download it and then let me show you my folder. You do need to get a folder where you want to save all this stuff. So for me, I have it in documents and then in DE10 Nano and then in repos and uh, here it is the E10 nano kit and then in tutorials and then under first my first FPGA I went ahead and downloaded my first FPGA PDF and put it inside this folder you'll notice that while you are on here while you are in here you download this and it does not have the uh, PDF saved in this repository so I don't know they made it really inconvenient doing it that way but um, so yeah I recommend clicking on tutorials all right cloning this repo and then clicking on the tutorials page and downloading each corresponding PDF so my first FPGA write up PDF putting it in the my first FPGA tutorial I'll show this in the next video too um, same thing for um, my first HPS system this is what they're calling the um, arm core uh, that's on chip um, anyways I did start working through these tutorials it isn't necessarily one what I want to cover in this tutorial series so the my first QSYS system there are some interesting things I saw going on so I think this might be like a later direction um, this tutorial series is really going to be focusing on how to work with that FPGA so um, I guess you really only need to concern yourself with this my first FPGA write-up um, and we will be going through this in the next video. Um, and then we're also going to be going over, um, you know, sort of understanding Verilog in the next video as well. Um, so I believe that is everything I wanted to talk about. Yes, it is. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Take care.